Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard American Airlines Flight 1476 with service from Austin Bergstrom International to Dallas Fort Worth International. We'll be departing in just a few minutes. Now, let's head over to the flight deck. All right, guys, just a um, quick hello. My name is Blue Chip HD. Um, welcome to Blue Chip Simulations. This is going to be my uh, first. Uh, first video on this channel um, and we've got what seems to be a good one today we are departing out of a rainy Austin Bergstrom um, if you're watching this video um, when it comes out it'll be um, it'll be quite apparent why it's raining if you're from the south uh, these are remnants of the Hurricane Harvey which uh, devastated a lot of southern Texas and Austin is experiencing a little bit of that, so we are actually going to be departing out of Austin. So let's uh, let's get down here into the FMC. We're starting off in K A U S K O S, and our route today is I created a route in um, PFPX before beforehand, and I uh, loaded that into the uh, company routes folder. So it's going to be pretty easy for me to uh, pull that out. So we are American Airlines 1476. And go ahead and activate. And I like to go ahead and leave the runway blank on here because I like to get that through the departures and arrivals page just after this. So today we are going to be using the um, OS 3 departure. Um, I actually learned that my nav data is out of date because I had to reinstall the aircraft when. Um, PMG told me to the most recent time, so I, I uh, for some reason my nav data is out of date. So we're going to be using the OS3 departure, which is going to be pretty similar. OS3 departure, and we are going to be departing on runway 35 left. Execute. So if we go in here, we are going to be uh, heading straight out and vectoring basically so um, let's uh, zoom out the range so CWK is right here so actually what we are going to do is since we are um, we're actually not going to be on VATSIM today um, I fancied not being uh, on the network today so we're going to go ahead and move CWK up right here and we're going to go straight there and then we are going to have a very short flight today because Dallas to Austin is just a little bit over uh, 45 minutes of flight time. I mean, actually, I think 45 minutes is about the max flight time that we do. So we're actually going to go ahead and, and plan our arrival into Dallas Fort Worth. So we're going to be using the uh, the Gen 9 arrival. Um, Pardon the sound real quick while I go pull up the weather for KDFW using Active Sky. So uh, service winds five, heading five zero at seven knots. True. Um, so it seems as though we're going to be uh, arriving on. Let me double check. Because they do have those uh, runway, those 13 runways on the uh, side. You want to see exactly where we should go? All right. So yes, it seems we should be um, arriving on runway three five left. We're gonna we're gonna do three five left just to minimize the amount of taxiing that we'll be doing. We're gonna do ILS three five left with the uh, the Gen 9 arrival and the CWK transition which is quite which is a very interesting transition because um, of how close it is to the Austin airport so uh, you'll see as we go these these short routes I, I find to be very entertaining because um, there's just so much weird stuff that you have to do because of how close the airports are together um, so actually we have not yet set up the um, fuel and payload so we're gonna go in here to fuel and we're going to set our uh, block fuel our release fuel to seven four no 
7747. So we have 16.8% fuel today. And our payload, we, I like to use the, uh, the zero fuel weight trick instead of trying to um, do it over here. So our, our zero fuel weight today is going to be 130.1. And there we have that set up. And we're going to bring it back to the doors page so that we can have easy access to it later when uh, GSX starts yelling at us. So back over here on this page, we are planning to use 7.7 7 point. I'm going to round up to 8,000 um, pounds of fuel. Um, zero fuel weight is going to be 130.1 like we put in earlier. It's going to fill in the gross weight for us. Our reserves that we uh, got from PFPX are going to be 2.4 thousand pounds and cost index, we're just going to use cost index of 80. Cruising altitude of flight level 280 and we're going to execute that and move on to our N1 limits. So using PFPX we um, actually calculated some takeoff data so we're going to be doing a um, takeoff D rate of Two and an assumed temperature takeoff of 22. Deg no, that's the outside air temperature. Assumed temperature of 43 degrees Celsius, which will put us at a climb one rating, a max in one of 90.7. So we could take off, and we'll be doing this in a flaps one configuration. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the winds of 010 at 19 knots. So. We actually got quite a bit of wind, mostly because of said aforementioned hurricane. 23.5% is the center of gravity that's given to us, and 5.31 is the trim. And we're going to just use these V1 speeds. They're a little bit higher than what PFPX gave me, but we are going to trust the aircraft that we are flying on. So um, if we get into the uh, captain's seat here, zoom down. 5.31 is that trim, so we're going to scroll the trim down until we're just above the 5 marker, and we should be good. Next up, we have to get our uh, altimeter, so we're going to go ahead and pull up the chaos conditions again. Pressure of 100.9, or since we're in the United States, we're going to use uh, inches of mercury, so 29.8. Scroll that way down with a uh, with these tropical storms. I am not surprised that the uh, okay active sky. Thank you for that. I am not surprised that the uh, altimeter is way down here. Um, so, uh, like we're doing before. So our V1 speed is 141. Uh, we're I like to put 20 knots higher than the uh, V1 speed. Um, sometimes I put in V2, but at a V2 of 147, I feel like that's going to be too low to actually put in here. And we're also going to arm auto throttle while we're here. Um, we're going to check out the runway. So since we are departing on runway 35 left, the heading for that runway is 353. So we're going to go ahead and put that into the uh, heading selector. And I don't know why I scrolled all the way around, because I just ended up where I was in the first place. Once again, like I said before, we are not flying on that sim, so we're going to clear ourselves all the way up to our cruising altitude of flight level 280. Alright. Now let's go ahead and pull up the GSX menu, and they are waiting for us to close some doors. So we're going to go ahead and close the left entry uh, forward and aft, and also the cargo door left and right. With all that taken care of, I'm pretty sure we'll be ready for pushback. So we're going to use GSX for that. Go ahead and put this FMC on the legs page and keep this one on the takeoff reference page. Let's go ahead and do a quick scan of the overhead instruments. Move GSX out of the way. Quick scan, turn the yaw damper on. Do a quick waterfall scan down, uh, make sure everything's how it needs to be. All right, we're going to go ahead and, and start the APU. Make sure the packs are off so that we can get that. Take this up to two, 280 and our landing altitude. Um, 550 is actually going to be quite correct. I know the um, DFW airport very well. It's, 
it's actually between 550 and 600 so where we're at is just fine for today so as we wait for the uh, APU to start up we're gonna go ahead and come over here to ground connections go ahead and remove that air conditioning unit and prepare to switch over to the APU generators and get on that uh, get off that ground power rather also going to go ahead and turn the seat belts on one because we're taking off and two because I know this is going to be a bumpy ride once we uh, get that APU gen on yep go ahead and turn on the gins and disconnect the ground power come down here disconnect disconnect and now we can get back to that legs page all right so go ahead and check one more outside view we are about ready to depart all we need now is to request pushback from gsx and we can get on our way so now here we are back in the cockpit and let's go ahead and get that gsx pushback going not that Alright, well, GSX menu does not want to pull itself up, so we're going to do the um, manual uh, pushback of the uh, FSX P3D system. So we're going to go ahead and start this clock over here, um, release the parking brake, and hit Shift P. Now that we're in motion, we're going to go ahead and start engine 2. Um, go ahead and while that's starting up, anti-collision light. We're going to do wing and logo lights on because it is a little bit dark outside. So for now we're just going to push straight back and then um, make a quick turn as soon as we are uh, in an acceptable position since GSX is not uh, cooperating with us. Go ahead and pull up our engine page. We are above uh, into motoring of 25.0 so we're going to go ahead and insert the fuel into engine 2 and get that started up wait for that starter switch to switch back we'll switch it to continuous and then turn the starter on for Number one, switch that to continuous and turn the ground. And we're going to go ahead and stop our pushback right here. That was a very abrupt stop. Do I have, I do have the parking brake on apparently. I thought I was turning it off, but in fact I was turning it on. And waiting for that N2 percentage to reach 25 and putting fuel into number one. So, what we are uh, our taxiing today is we're going to be turning left straight out of here, uh, going down until we get to the Golf 3 exit from the apron, um, then turning right onto Golf, taking a left on Charlie, and taking Charlie all the, ra all the way around to the beginning of runway 35 left. It's going to be a little bit lengthy taxi today, but it's probably about still one of the uh, shorter taxis at this airport alright now that we got that on let's go ahead and switch it to continuous turn on all our fuel pumps gen 1 gen 2 uh, flip the APU off because we do not need it for takeoff um, go ahead and turn the hydraulic electric pumps on and the probe heat and we'll get window heat on later in the flight when we actually need it it's very warm and muggy outside so I don't think we'll need it we get runway turnoffs on, taxi lights on, and do another real quick scan. Uh, we'll get landing lights on when we get to the runway. Same with the uh, strobe lights. And we can now turn the packs on because engines are stable. 
Go ahead and clear the information clutter, put that back on this screen, and we are ready for taxi. One quick thing, I like to turn the TCAS on on the ground. Lots of airports nowadays actually track your position using the TCAS. Parking brake disconnected, and it's time to taxi. All right, engines are working just fine. All right, say wave goodbye to um, stand 17 at Austin Bergstrom International Airport, and we will get, make our way to DFW. All right, up here on our left is the Golf 3. Little, um, not 100% sure what they're called. The, uh, it's a short taxiway. That's what I'm gonna call it today. Cross taxiway, secondary taxiway, not main, I don't know. Kind of swinging it around there. Probably going a little too fast through that corner, but uh, not a problem right now. All right, immediately turning right onto golf. So while we're taxiing, I'm just going to talk a little bit more about what I'm uh, doing here. So one thing I also noticed is I do not have auto brakes set to RTO, but I would have caught that in my pre-takeoff checklist. Also, while we're moving, go ahead and put flaps to one. So one thing that I'm trying to do here is, um, is I'm starting a uh, flight series uh, that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing Monday real ops. I like, I will try to do a uh, real flight, a real world flight every Monday um, for you guys. Um, so please let me know how you enjoy the flights. If you have any flight requests, do not, uh, do not hesitate to put them in the comments below. I will uh, take a look at each and every one of them. And the more I get, the easier that makes my job. And not only does it make my job easy, but it also lets you guys see what you want. All right, as we take a left here onto the Charlie taxiway, uh, we're going to make our straightaway down the end to the beginning of runway 35 left. We're going to speed up just a little bit here once we uh, get it moving. Once we get around the uh, corner here. Speed up a little bit and get on our way. No need to be taxiing at a uh, 10 knots on a, down a straightaway, right? We have places to be, people to see. Alright. So just going to uh, brief the departure a little bit. Um, it's really just kind of a uh, straight out departure. We're going straight from uh, normally this um, OS departure has is a uh, vector departure. Um, we're not going to be doing that today. We're going to be going straight to CWK, which actually is the transition point into the DFW SID, which is or star. I think I got those. I think I mixed those up. Either way, we're basically skipping the SID and going straight to the transition point for the DFW star, which is probably less than 20 nautical miles away from Austin. Uh, so it's going to be a very quick transition and there's not going to be much cruising in this flight. Go ahead and get us some other good views. Um, uh, there's a good wing view. There's that wing flex. I 
as I stray off the uh, taxiway center line. It's nice and rainy here, nice and windy as well. Um, hopefully we don't get too much of a uh, crosswind on departure that screws us up much because it is um, it is a 19 knot wind at um, at 10 10 degrees and we're taking off 35 left. Um, so apparently it's gone up to 20 knots, which is not a huge difference between 19 and 20, but it's all right. All right, so we're about to come into a turn real quick, turning towards the uh, taxiway, which is over er, towards the runway, which is over there to our right. Um, Gonna slow down, pull back the power just a little bit to aid with that slowing down so we don't have to wear out the brakes too much. And we're doing a little bit too much natural slowing down because I haven't put a single bit of braking in yet. Over here on your left, according to my charts, is actually a... Um, Army National Guard apron and um, setup. So we're going to stay over here and not intrude on their space. Also, because we want to get our passengers safe and sound to Dallas Fort Worth International Airport. So for this first flight, I was uh, I just wanted to pick something really simple and short, uh, so that I could really just more spend more time talking to you guys. Uh, because you guys are really who this is all about. It's not about me. It's uh, I'm just doing something that I love and something that I want to share with uh, the greater flight sim community. Because the uh, flight sim community is one of the um, one of the most important things around to me right now. So uh, we're actually uh, as we come up. I'm gonna hold off on that for a little bit. As we come up to the uh, runway hold short line. Uh, we're not on VATSIM and we're not flying with any AI traffic, but we do have some things to do before we uh, enter the runway. So we're going to go ahead and flip on our landing lights, turn off the taxi lights, get those strobes on, ding the cabin, auto brake RTO, flaps at one, takeoff, um, trim is set, and we are ready to go. So go ahead and enter the runway and we are going to use the hidden click spot toga button over there on the uh, on the mode control panel. So we're going to arm VNAV and active sky news to quit. Oh, can't believe I uh, forgot to turn on the flight directors. I was wondering why VNAV and LNAV didn't arm, but all right, as we are lined up. We're gonna get ready. Vietnam, LNAV armed, flight directors on. All right, get to 40%. 40% and one. Engines are stable and toga power set. I'm gonna advance the throttles all the way forward on my end. Although in a real Boeing, it does it on its own. Oof, this rain though. This rain is really getting us. I can uh, I can feel the wind pushing me to the side too. I've got a got a hefty bit of left uh, nose wheel left rudder going. Oh, it is hard to control. All right, V1. Rotate. And then pull back about a little bit over 10 degrees on the stick. All right, positive rate, gear up. We're gonna do a little bit of manual flying here. There we go. There was a little bit of a resistance going on that runway, as you saw, I was uh, kinda all over the place. And as we start our turn out, I'm gonna go ahead and put in autopilot so that we can check out some of these views as we enter the clouds. Oh, look at that. Well, 
view was good while it lasted. Let's make it back into the flight deck now. We are uh, climbing, climbing quite high. We're going to go ahead and set the gear to off. We're climbing quite quickly, so we still got flaps one. We don't have enough speed to uh, go flaps two just yet. Oh, hello. We lost, uh, we lost vertical navigation. Go ahead and, uh, resume that ourselves. Um, all right, that's back in. Looks like there's some, um, strong G-forces going on. We're 6,000 feet in the air and have a 40 knot headwind. All right, looks like we can now put flaps one up. That was really kind of bad. We uh, started to tilt way nose up. Should have never taken my hands off the, off the controls, but that's all right. Looks like we're about to be above the cloud level anyways. Oh, look at this. This looks beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Let's see if we can, uh, a good view right there, right? I think I'm actually going to save that. Alright, as we are climbing through 7,500 feet, we reached our uh, 250 nautical, or our 250 knots restriction below 10,000 feet. Um, go ahead and bring the uh, altitude range out on here. One thing that we are going to do is we're going to double check for root continuity over here uh, as we get closer to Dallas. See if you'll uh, look right here. You can see top of climb and top of descent are less than 20 nautical miles away from each other. So. It's one thing that we really need to look out for and be ready for. So it looks like we have a discontinuity right here. Um, we're actually just going to take ourselves direct to Tandy from there, and then that'll turn us right onto the uh, right onto the glide slope and the localizer. So it looks like we're done here. Go to route progress page and keep tabs on that. Top of climb, 1625 Zulu, so just about nine minutes. And estimated time of arrival, 1647, so not too much time after that. So we're actually going to go check out some outside views. There's a, a lot of sunlight and clouds here, which is uh, really reflecting off the uh, body of the plane. And, uh, you know, these clouds actually look a little off. I'm wondering if they are actually active sky cloud art, because that, uh, that active sky error that I've kept getting is actually from the, uh, the active sky cloud art. So as we um, as we start to accelerate above 10,000 feet and climb to cruising altitude, I'm going to leave you guys to it and just let you enjoy some of the cruise. I'll see you guys when we start to plan descent.
Welcome back. We are uh, just at our uh, top of descent, and we're rolling back the altitude down to 3,000 feet. That's where we'll find our uh, final. Our uh, that's where we will start our uh, glide slope. That's what I'm looking for. I pull up the charts for KDFW, Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. Uh, like I said earlier, we are coming in on runway 35 left. ILS 35 left is actually 6,000 feet. I was wrong. following our VNAV path and we're going to get our nose down in the um, in the FMC clear that out clear that out and we're going to be doing a uh, flaps 30 uh, 30 at 143 111.35 um, and course 356 are our is our important information so it was that 111.35 so we're going to go ahead and program those into the nav radios so that we have them set way in advance and do not have to worry about forgetting when we get there so as we descend let's uh, let's check our progress see how, about how much time we seem to have left 1648 is our uh, Spend a time of arrival, so just a little over 18 minutes. So as we descend, I'm going to um, let you guys go again just for a second after we planned our approach, and we'll get back when it's about time to uh, prepare for final. We are back. We're going to be uh, flipping on that auto brakes too, and we are also out of VNAV for the time being. Um, we are just about 1,500 feet over our uh, VNAV path. Um, so I went ahead and put us into vertical speed mode and threw out the. Um, lever of shame also known as speed brakes uh, for the time being we are still gaining a little bit of speed so I think I might bring down this V speed or the the V speed just a little bit the vertical speed because we are starting to catch up with that VNAV path uh, once we get to about 200 above uh, we're gonna go ahead and put it back in VNAV because beyond that uh, the plane should be able to correct itself. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this back a little bit more so that we don't overspeed too much. But we are still catching up. So that is good. Actually, once that purple bar is a little bit over that middle line, that's when we will uh, flip it back over to VNAV. We're going to pull this back to 1,500 feet per minute. And we should be getting there real soon. Go ahead and bring this range in over here. Make that my short range display. It's good not having a co pilot. I get to have all the displays I want. Alright, so we are looking good. I'm going to go ahead and throw it back in VNAV. Let it, let it do its thing, and we're still a little bit over our uh, VNAV speed. So we're going to. Uh, Let 
keep the lever out for just a little longer. Take it down just a little bit. And we'll completely get rid of it now. We will have um, some deceleration points coming up. So I'm not sure how much lever we are going to need. But it is there just in case. We have had some great views of the, uh, the Texas landscape coming in. Uh, coming over here to the first officer seat, we can look out over the uh, the east as we descend upon Dallas Fort Worth. So far, we've been off blocks for 38 minutes. If you'll notice the other clock, it says 17. That's because I forgot to start this clock on takeoff. Normally, I start the first officer's clock when we are off blocks and the captain's clock when I start our takeoff roll, but I did not do that because I was brain dead, uh, but in the future I'll make sure I get that done. That is always one thing that I have definitely forgotten way too often. Um, so while we're out, change the altimeter to 2994, um, a more a uh, more uh, more standard pressure <laughs> than uh, than we were at in Austin. There's a little bit less weather here right now, so we should be good on our way in. Fortunately, we are below 250 knots going into this deceleration, so we shouldn't need shouldn't really need any speed brakes. Uh, but we will see. We're about to turn onto basically what is going to be our base leg to go intercept with Tandy over here, and then get on the localizer and the glide slope. Um, for some reason, the uh, autopilot A has uh, broken during the flight, so I'm not sure that we will. I mean, we won't be auto landing anyways, but hopefully that this will not cause a problem with the uh, the beginning of the localizer. So it looks like those deceleration circles just took us down to 240, and we were already there anyways. This next one will probably take us down to uh, flaps up speed, um, and according to the uh, According to the FMCs, we should be down in just about nine minutes or less, depending on how quickly I uh, take that lot, that glide slope and localizer. We can go a little bit faster because we're our um, the approach speed is going to be 148. 147. So I'm going to do uh, four or five knots higher than our flaps 30 speed. Um, so we should be good there. Let's go ahead and do one more quick check of the overhead panel. We are below 10,000 feet. We're going to turn those lights on. Runway turnoffs never got turned off, apparently. Um, oh, yes. And I already turned these to continuous and we're going to go ahead and actually turn the logo and wing lights off because there's uh, not much cloud, not much weather, not much anything that we need to that. So might as well uh, save some light bulbs, I guess, right? I don't know. All right, go ahead and bring the range in on our um, display here. We're going to end up with about 2.9 thousand pounds of fuel when we get down. Um, I think the fuel calculations might be a little bit off because it does say 3.2 and this reading has 3.0 so the the FMC fuel calculations are a wee bit off but that's all right. So we are about six knots above our target speed so we're going to go ahead and pull out half speed brakes or half well it's really closer to a, um, a third or a quarter. Um, because it is half of the flight detent. So, should be hitting that deceleration circle soon, and then I'm probably going to put out full flight detent once we do. There we go. That was kind of buggy there, but uh, we are going down to flaps up speed. And as soon as we get there, we're going to put out flaps one, 
and probably flaps two as well. We are a uh, thousand from level at six thousand. Um, we are nearing the localizer, so I'm going to line up this heading and go ahead and hit VOR lock. VOR slash localizer, but VOR lock is just so much easier to say. So then once we get onto that, we will arm the approach because I have that in. I have the. Uh, so I have 111.35 both active on the nav radios and the course are both set to 356. Look on our left, it looks like we see two airports right here. I'm not exactly sure what airports they are. Um, we are coming in from the south of Dallas, so we don't have to go up and around like you do a lot of the times when you come into this airport. And most of the time, the winds favor landing on the 1.7 and 1.8 runways, sets of runways. Uh, but today, it seems as though the winds are favoring landing north, which is, uh, which is a good surprising change. Um, so we are counting a little bit of turbulence. We're going to go ahead and set flaps one and slow down just a little bit more. Leave that uh, speed break out and go ahead and arm the approach, arm the glide slope. So we slow down. So we have caught the glide slope. Um, we're going to hopefully slow down pretty quickly and avoid a lot of this turbulence. Um, Auto throttle is having a heck of a time um, over here. We're going to go ahead and throw out flaps too as well just to help with the uh, slowing down situation just a little bit. If we look down here, this is always a nice handy reference. These are the uh, max speeds. So if we need to, we can also go ahead and put out flaps 5 without having any worry of going over speed on it. In theory, we could also put out flaps 10, but with the speed jumping around the way it is, it uh, could easily exceed that speed, and that would not be good. Hey, well, my iPad thought I said Siri. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and throw out flaps 5 now that our speed is starting to stabilize. Um, and we're going to bring our speed bug all the way down to 147, like I mentioned before. Leave the uh, flaps out because we do not seem to be slowing down very well on our own. Not the flaps, leave the speed brakes out. Of course we're going to leave the flaps out. The uh, flaps are going to keep us in the air going so slow. So it looks like the airport is right up there. Um, it has not loaded in yet, but that is FS Dream Team scenery for you. It doesn't normally load in until you are very close to it. Alright, so as we're reaching flaps 5, we're going to go ahead and proceed to flaps 10, flaps 15, and then flaps 25. It's also time to put our gear down as we get a little bit closer gear will definitely help us slow down so we are configured very early for this airport but I've noticed our speeds been jumping around a lot and I would like to make sure that we are configured way early as opposed to way late so we're still about nine miles out but better early than late And might as well go ahead and throw in flaps 30 because there's not a whole lot of difference between 30 and 25. Airport seems to have loaded in way out there. Once we get about 5 miles out, I'm going to go ahead and take the autopilot out and land this bird myself. Because manual landings are what we're all here for in flight simulation, ain't it? Move some stuff out of the way on my desk so that I can have clear, uh, 
clear range of motion. Move my chair a little bit forward so I can get my feet on the rudder pedals. Oh, without actually pressing the rudder pedals while flying. I do notice we have a heck of a crosswind, 18 knots, so we might actually need a tiny bit of rudder near the end of our descent. And because of said crosswind, I think I might actually delay when I'm going to take manual control because I'm not the best at landing in crosswinds. All right, we are slowly but surely making it a little bit closer. Our, we're still at about only 48 minutes time, 48 minutes off the blocks. Um, go outside and do one more quick outside view before we uh, take over control of this airplane. And there's downtown Dallas off to your left there. Right of the airplane, left on your screen. All right. So this is where we're going to go ahead and take control of the aircraft. Hit that two or three times just to make sure the uh, we don't have to listen to that ugly horn the entire way down. Leave auto throttle on because these things actually idle the throttles for you, I believe. Ooh, actually. You know, I should probably know this, but I'm not 100% sure if the uh, 737 idles for you. So it looks like we're the wind is coming down to 9 knots or so across the nose. So the crosswind has died down a little bit as we get closer to the ground. We are now a little bit above the glide after I've taken control. The, uh, the wind is getting closer on our nose instead of across it and getting slower down to 7 knots. So we should have a pretty easy landing once we get in here. I'm looking out at the runway and I'm hoping that it is 100% loaded and that it's just a little bit graphically buggy. Because this FS Dream Team's scenery while I am a little bit biased because I am from the Dallas-Fort Worth area and this is my home airport, I do believe that this is uh, quite a beautiful scenery and it's always fun to fly in and out of. So we are a little high, but um, we should be fine now. 100, 40. Oh, we are floating it just a little bit. Alright, time to uh, have those throttles idle. Yeah. And... Oh, we're still floating it. Alrighty. A little bit of rudder, reverse thrust. We're going to get good amount of reverse thrust going because we did float it down the runway a little bit. Alright, and manual braking, take the auto brake off. Go ahead and disarm that. And we are now under control. And we're going to go ahead and start bringing the flaps up and take this next exit. Uh, put the speed brakes down. Whoa, hello. Apparently I pressed the wrong key binding and put us on the uh, 2D cockpit. Nice. So we're going to take this next left over here. The um, the blurry runway textures is one thing that has always gotten me with uh, this FS Dream Team scenery, but it's something that I've definitely learned to deal with. At this point, I'm okay with it. Alright, so as we taxi, we are going to be taxiing to... Um, we're going to be taxiing to gate D38.
which is going to be across the airplane bridge that they have, and to the left, to Terminal D, because 35 left that we're on is on the east side of the airport, and Terminal D is on the west side of the airport. We could have landed 36 right, which is actually on the uh, on that side of the airport, but we uh, we chose to just stick with 35 left. With stuff with everything that I know of the airport, a lot of the short and domestic flights, although they might go out of terminals B and D. Um, B is actually the uh, the regional. B and D are both west side, and. B is where all the regional jets go. They still take off on the um, the 18 and 36 side. Whereas uh, it's mostly international and long hauls and domestic long hauls that take off on. Uh, uh, I changed views just in time for you guys to see that uh, terrible lineup on the taxiway. mostly long hauls and um, long domestic flights that take off from 17-35 side of the airport, also known as the west side, west air side. So as we taxi along here, we will be um, going across the uh, bridge, so I'll bring that out in a second. Turn the landing lights off, taxi lights on. We can turn the strobe off, but leave the anti-collision on. These are the uh, the bridges that I was talking about before, um, and the roads that go underneath it. Sort of well modeled. Um, really, the airport structures are the uh, what takes the cake for this scenery for me. Um, the roads are roads are somewhat well modeled but um, as far as I'm concerned or as far as I know rather this is a um, quite an aging scenery uh, I'm not exactly sure when it was released um, I mean at least a few years old um, and really in this day and age with prepared version 4 anything is considered aging um, so So we are going to take a left up here on the golf taxiway as Active Sky Cloud Art keeps trolling me with its notifications. I actually closed ASCA earlier and it is not it is refusing to acknowledge the fact that I closed the program. So as we are uh, taxiing and coming up on this left-hand turn on the golf, I'd like to say thank you for watching. We've still got a little bit more taxiing to go and um, setting up of GSX. It, hopefully the uh, menu actually pops up for us. There it is. Um, next page, next page. Terminal D. Uh, Terminal D has and gate D, 30, did I say 36 or 37? I can't remember. Oh, I didn't say either of those. I said D38. So it's next page. D38. I do not want to follow me car. I can find my own way there. It's like I was saying before, uh, thank you so much for checking out this video. Um, it is the first of many flights to come. Um, Flight Sim, in my opinion, is the best simulator out there, period. Um, people give A lot of people give it a bad rap for being boring. A lot of people give it a bad rap for how aging the technology is, which, in terms of age technology, they, they have a point. But at the same time, you have to look at how open and detailed the flight sim actually is because if you look at some of these other simulators there's really not 
as much, I don't want to call it a sandbox per se, but there's not as much you can do. There's not as many options, and it's a whole lot more scripted than anything that these other simulators are coming up with. So in my opinion, Flight Sims are the best simulations around, but this is a simulation-based channel, um, much like those that you might be used to from other people. Uh, so this is a simulation based channel and I look forward to posting more simulation videos um, whether it be train sim, farm sim, flight sim or really any other sim because there's, uh, there's a whole lot of sims that people come out with nowadays that honestly look pretty good and some are good, some are bad and uh, that's another thing I wish to help with is uh, help distinguishing between the good and the bad um, reviewing uh, simulations and uh, so yeah this is uh, my simulation venture uh, this is my start into the s getting into the uh, simulation content creation world um, so we're gonna take a left here on uh, 122 um, which actually I believe is wrong if I want to get to uh, if I want to go on the beast on the D as in dog stands, I need to, uh, I should have turned on 124, which was the next one. So I'm actually going to uh, come right up here, turn right, and cut across just a little bit. And I see GSX set up for me down here on the end. We are moving a little bit too fast because I gave it a little too much power, but that's alrighty. That is all right. Um, so, once again, I do hope that you enjoyed this first flight video. Um, I'm going to be doing at least one of these per week and definitely every Monday. Uh, other stuff might be a little bit different um, if I do other flight videos throughout the week, but Mondays will always be real ops. So I will go find a flight um, in the world somewhere that I want to mimic basically. It's a flight that I want to mimic because for me that's what simulation is all about. Simulation is all about um, creating a real li recreating a real life scenario. So uh, ex pardon me one second while I uh, work on my parking here. Coordinate here with safe GSX and safe dock. And stop there. Parking brake. All right, now let's come up here. And a few gens on. Oh, should have done this first. Engine cutoff, those electric probe heat. Uh, what else? Go ahead and turn those fast seatbelt signs off because we have the uh, hit those packs as well. Anti collision lights can come off, taxi lights can come off, the uh, engine starters as well. And let's get down here. Menu, PMG, nope, that's not it. Menu, FS actions, ground connections, wheel chocks, so we can undo the parking brakes, ground power, and air conditioning unit. Once again, clicking the wrong button. I can do ground power and shut off the APU. I'm gonna go ahead and request deboarding. Connect the jetway using control J and open up all the doors. Well, thanks everybody for uh, checking out this video. Uh, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Uh, if you want to see a flight request, or if you have a flight request and you would like for me to fly it, uh, please post it in the comments below. I'll be reviewing every single one. Um, and honestly, uh, unless I get overwhelmed with them, I will probably be doing every single one of them. 
Um, a lot of it depends on whether or not I have the scenery, but I'm always looking to expand my scenery library. So if I don't have the scenery, if it's a good quality payware scenery, or even better if it's good quality freeware, which might not exist, um, I will do it. Uh, my main sim is prepared version 4. I actually uninstalled prepared version 3 from my computer. Uh, so that's not even on my computer anymore, so I cannot currently fly an Airbus. I am stuck with all the Boeing PMDG products. I cannot fly an Airbus currently. Once that comes out for version 4, I will be able to. That also means I cannot go to Heathrow because I own Aerosoft Heathrow. And I don't want to buy UK2000 Heathrow because I know as soon as I do, Aerosoft will be released for version 4. Uh, so those are currently the limitations, but um, but other than that, uh, just let me know what you want to see in terms of a flight, and I'm gonna I'll make it happen. So uh, once again, I am uh, Blue Chip HD. This is Blue Chip Simulations. Blue Chip Simulations. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, I don't know why I uh, paused on the simulations. So, uh, once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you guys next time.